Today, we'll be looking at the new meta setup, using the R Academy units that outputs extreme damage quickly, simply, and consistently against a wide range of battles. Our first sample battle is the latest event's EX3. The Academy Auto Win Team works by using Academy Sophie and Ryza to set up double blue panels for Academy Resna to skill two from, after stacking them by using items. The speed tuning for the turn order is quite important, since Sophie creates her blue panels at your unit's current timeline positions. Ungenerating the double blue panels will require another character and Resna to have back-to-back -back turns. Additionally, for Resna to be able to stack, she needs the panel after her to be blue. We'll accomplish this by breaking at least one mob with Ryza, which will also trigger her panel upgrading effect. Our second character will usually be a breaker to help lower the target's break to the point where Ryza can break it easily. With our fourth character and Resna positioned behind the mob we're breaking, their turns will be shifted forward by one, setting up the blue panel for Resna to step into. Note that Ryza's upgrade effect applies to the panels under your units after they're repositioned from any enemies breaking, so only the earlier panel gets upgraded. The exception is if your first character is fast enough to get their second turn before the enemies recover, which usually won't happen for endgame fights. After this, our fourth character is usually a buffer so that Ryza's debuffs aren't used up. Finally, Resna uses items collecting both blue panels and fires her skill too, wiping the field. You can see Resna's efficiency from double blue panels giving her a total of 259% skill damage and an additional 88% crit damage from her weapon's effect. Since she ends on a blue panel, she also gets free guaranteed crit for her skill too. Her buffs are so high that further buff items have relatively lower value and debuff items with magic or wind curse become more effective for pushing higher damage. And that's it, damage goes boom. Let's run that again in full auto. Depending on which enemies you're breaking, you may need to manually target the pre-breaker. Not a big deal. In this case, we're breaking the earliest enemy unit, so the single targeting works correctly. We can just sit back and let it do its thing. GG. Next, let's take a look under the hood at how the party is configured. Looking over the gear, Sophie uses various pieces that grant buffs after her actions and the enhanced attacker buffs trait to boost these. The second character is Flex, usually a pre-breaker, Leela in this case. Leela is nice because her passive gives the party a 15% M attack boost, 
and her skill too lowers ice resist before it hits, but we can slot in other characters as needed. We just need them faster than Ryza, though faster than Sophie also is usually fine. We want their break boosts to be not too high that they fully break the targets. Here, Ryza is stacked with debuff-oriented gear, though in some cases, you'll need her to contribute more break herself. Since her debuff increases magic-typed damage, the enhanced debuff's trait works, so we want trait level 5 of that in all slots when we don't need extra break. The fourth slot is also Flex, with Flock being ideal for her stat boost passive and sizable crit damage buff, though a tank buffer hybrid like Totori or Rose Liddy can also be good. They need to carry the item gauge plus 10% Memoria, so items will be ready for Resna on turn 5. You'll want them to go ahead of Resna, but with their speeds as closely matched as possible, which is achieved by adjusting the accessories. And they both need to go after at least one enemy you're breaking. Finally, for Resna, we're using her event weapon that gives her a crit damage buff whenever she starts her turn on a buff panel, including item turns. Her armor increases the effect of all the various buffs she gets. And her accessory will change depending on the speed tuning, often not the ideal choice because those tend to be too fast. I'm using a Memoria not at max level for the closest possible speed matching with Flock, but it's probably not necessary to optimize that much. The items are all flexible, usually Dark Water with Wind Curse for AoE debuffs, or Ancestral Spellbook works if you need extra damage on one target. With that, we're ready to go fight various things so you can see it in action. Starting off the new EX2 for the recently opened Sophie event rerun, rated at 19k power. We have Marion for slot 2 and the boss is tough, so we're hitting it with dedicated single target spellbooks. I'm running Marion faster than Sophie here so that we can switch to auto immediately after manually selecting her target. ありがとう。Up next, the Salberg event rerun EX2 is a bit easier, with a less tanky boss and the first few enemies not attacking on their initial turns. We're running Wind Eska for slot 2 and back to Dark Waters. We can full auto this as long as Eska starts after the boss so that the targeting will aim for the golem, which Ryza can break.
last, we'll pay another visit to our favorite turtle. The main body needs to be broken for it to take much damage, and it's set too far back in turns to be targeted by single target breakers. So we're using Slash Ryza and a craft trio to help break it. With those adjustments, full auto works for this one too. Anyway, that concludes the demo of the Academy Auto Win setup. Thanks for watching. <laughs>